Hello, my name is Gamal Hassan. This is Professor Jusimar Aller. Today, I'm going to give you guys an introduction of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Okay? Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu originated as a self-defense, but later on, throughout the years, with many developments, became also a martial art inserted in the sports context. We are going to today guys to approach uh, many concepts and uh, objectives of the martial art that's predominantly uh, developed on the ground. We are going to start standing and working on few uh, few movements here to give you guys a better understanding of what is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Today we start a demonstration standing and I'm basically looking for implement here few movements, work on progressions that will be based on trying to implement leverage to overcome strength and pure power. Okay? That aspect of the game will bring it to a more even field where a smaller and potentially weaker practitioner can face a much larger and bigger opponent. We are going to display here to execute a double leg takedown. Very simple movement where I will train, change my level and try to control my partner's legs. As soon as I take my partner down, then we are going to start the sequence of movements, progressions, which will eventually drive me to potential submission. All right, so giving you guys a better understanding here, we are going to initiate our, our, our demonstration here standing, okay? And I want to bring the fight to the ground. And to bring the fight to the ground, we are going to display here, execute a very, very simple movement, our double leg take down. And the, the idea is basically what? I'm trying to change my level, control my partner's legs, and put him on the floor as I want. So I will advance, and as soon as I engage, I will bend my knees, advancing both of my hands to his legs. So I drop on my knees, I will take the fight to the ground, place that I want to, uh, I want a development sequence here, and again, as I said, trying here to establish a dominant position, of which will give me eventually a potential submission, okay? This is a situation that we commonly call closed guard, okay? Closed guard, why? Because Professor now has both of his legs are one of my hips, and he crosses his feet behind of my back. The intention of the guard is, first and foremost, acting here as a defense. We are looking for defense first. So Professor is not only retaining my body, but he's also trying here to prevent myself from advancing, opening his legs and eventually going to his upper body. It would make his position much more vulnerable, okay? And we have different types of guards, different ways to work the guard. So the main concept here to be understood is my partner is on the ground, he's working with his legs. Whether he locks his feet behind of my back, he retains one of my legs, or he has only his feet in front of my chest, he's working his guard. From the guard, he's able to work on sweeps, when he starts on the bottom and finishes on top. And potential submissions. So see that, although my partner is on the bottom, he's not vulnerable. As long as he keeps his feet in front of me, he keeps a good retention. And my goal here is, I could eventually work on submissions from inside of the guard, okay? I can work on chokes, I can attack my partner's arms, I'm my, my, our primary targets, but I can also try here to pass the guard. And passing the guard is what? I'll be trying here to open my partner's legs, open his guard therefore, and go around, going through the guard, moving over. So somehow I'm trying here to reach my partner's upper body, situation that would make him much more vulnerable and would eventually provide, provide more opportunity to attack his arms and his neck. So from the top position, as I know that this position here originally is defensive, but I know that my partner can also be dangerous from that. So I'm trying here to do what? I'm trying to escape off the legs, first and foremost, keep my position on top, because I know that one of my partner's goals is trying to take me down. I want to be on top all the time, and I'm trying here to get rid of the legs, because I know that he's potentially, and we will eventually try here to attack, okay? So my goal here is trying to get rid of the legs, as I said, because the legs are dangerous, and I'm trying to establish a dominant position over my partner's upper body, where he becomes much more vulnerable and provides the opportunity to attack his neck, his arms here, and his neck. So one very simple example of guard passing here is, so I hold the belt, I can step here, and I open the guard, okay? I could have worked on different ways, we have many movements. And as soon as the guard is open, we also understand here guys that there's no specific way Okay? We have ways, and always understanding that 
if I want to reach my partner's upper body and make him feel, make him more vulnerable, I'm trying to control the legs somehow, okay? So my first obstacle will be here, the legs, because my partner will be trying to place his legs in front of me. So this point here, I can hold his legs, I can define one side, see that I'm now standing, I don't need to be necessarily on my knees all the time, and I step, I move around here, and we go to the side control position. Side control position, see that now, I could reach here the dominant position, my partner now is no longer able to work with his legs, is much more vulnerable, and from this point here, we can, as I said before, I can work on attacking his arms, attacking his neck, work on submissions therefore, or I can work on progressions, mount position, and knee on belly. See that, I'm always looking for what? Keep a solid control, I try not to let my partner escape. Knee on belly will be, Based on, I will hold my partner's lapel, I post my hand on his hips, and see that as I post on him, remember, preparation for the movement. I will move up here, I elevate my body here, my upper body, I place my chin against his, his belly, and I stand. One point of control, knee on belly, and one point of mobility, okay? Where I can, although my partner will be moving and trying to escape, replace his guard, I'll be able to keep it. Okay, and again, as we spoke before, we can work on submissions, the choke, as we have already exemplified. We can work on arm bars here, where naturally I'm going to attack my partner's arm, and my partner can try to escape. He can try again to push, maybe bring his leg back here, recover his guard. So see that for every movement that I'm eventually trying to develop, there is always a potential answer, okay? There is no situation in Jiu-Jitsu where without an option, okay? We are always going to have some potential options, some offensive point or defensive point, okay? So, we spoke about side control, we spoke about knee on belly, which is a derivation of side control, and now let's progress to mount position, okay? And mount position will be, I will preserve my grips here, again, speaking about examples, I'll be trying to open up my elbows, my partner's elbow, so I open up here, one and two, bring my shin close here, and I slide over. See that? Now, I'm literally seated on my partner's stomach, okay? I'll be trying here to potentially attack my partner's arms and neck, no longer facing the legs, and as we, we are constantly speaking about, maintenance is essential, so I try to place my feet as close as possible to my partner's hips, and my knees will be under his arm cage. Of course, my partner can also escape of this position, and one of the escapes will be he tries to push my, my legs, work on his hip escapes, moving his hips therefore, and try to bring me back to guard. The professor pushes and can replace his half guard, one of the legs only, but he can still go all the way here to close guard. Okay? Or you can also work his guard open. Again, the idea is you are trying to bring your legs back, you are trying to replace your guard. Whether you are bringing to close guard, half guard, spider guard, guard open, therefore, doesn't really matter. Remember, you are trying to protect yourself again and naturally using your legs to that. Okay? So, and also, as soon as I hold, I can control, I can control the head, I can control the arm, I try to keep my knees as high as possible. And again, we can work on chokes, the cross choke here, our most, I would say here, most basic attack from mount position. We can also, again, work Americana. I attack the arm instead, I drop my elbow, arm goes under, I hold my wrist, and I finish it. So see that, gradually, guys, we are progressing from one point where I had to face my partner's legs where we were inside of the guard, facing our partner's legs to the point where following a sequence of movements, a natural progression, we could reach our partner's upper body, controlling him. Remember that every step, whether it's a progression to another position or submission, depends on control. To establish a good, establish a good control, we spoke about knee on belly, we spoke about mount position, always understanding that there is a counter, there is a difference for any situation, okay? We now could reach mount position and we worked on submissions, whether I'm going to attack my partner's neck, or my partner's arms, okay? But we, don't, we do not work only on dominant controls when we are on top, then my partner has back on the ground, but we can also work on our back control or back mount, okay? So the back control position will eventually happen when I 
from mom, sometimes even side control, depends on how my partner reacts. And see that this movement will eventually be originated by one defensive movement. Because my partner will try to turn to his belly now or turn to his shoulder in order to defend himself. So as I know that he's eventually trying to defend himself and I wanna keep my dominant position, so as soon as the professor turns here, he's turning, I'm trying to stop him from turning, and as soon as he turns all the way to belly down, I will try here to become like a human backpack, okay? So my feet, our hooks, are placing, okay, over his legs, and I'm trying to somehow, there are many grips to work, I try to establish control of my partner's upper body, okay? Again, see that the focus is constantly trying to get a control of your partner's upper body, whether you are on side control, knee on belly, mouth position, or back control. We are constantly trying to make our well, partner's uh, position vulnerable and give, uh, provide us opportunity to attack the head and the arms, okay? And from the position where we have our back control, I can try to land here on my side, with one arm over here, over the shoulder, where I can maybe access my partner's neck, I can attack my partner's arms. My partner is again able to escape, he's again able to defend himself. So professor will try here to escape, so he tries here to push, get rid of my arms, push my legs off, and again, go to top position. So see that for every movement, guys, every attack, every submission or progression, there is always a potential defense, okay, of whether my partner is going to be end up, ending up on top, as Professor did just now, or he's going to be ending up on the bottom, okay, when he can replace his guard. And my goal here naturally is submissions. As I mentioned here, guys, we can work on really basic and simple rear naked choke, where I can squeeze my partner's neck using my arm. We can work with the lapel, on the lapel here, Remember that if I want to uh, uh, if I want to squeeze my partner's neck, naturally that I have to have idealistically, of course, one arm over the shoulder. Then we try to squeeze by using the lapel. I can, for example, attack my partner's arm. I can try here to control the arm. I can step, shift, and we go for the arm bar. So see that we have a good and very, very strong variety of movements that will eventually give us opportunity to finish the fight. So based on that explanation, guys. Uh, we could have a little understanding of what's jiu-jitsu. As I said, we have endless uh, developments. And uh, if you if you have never tried jiu-jitsu before, or if you are keep, if you are already training, if you have understanding of uh, what what is jiu-jitsu, so I would recommend you for you guys that have never tried before, please jump into the gym. Let's try. Let's give it a try. If you have not, if you have been training already, you have been developing your techniques. Keep on doing that. The more you show up, the better you become, the more clear it becomes. Okay? And I hope to see everybody here on the mat. Okay, let's spread the art here and let's get better every day.